I can take down the posters. Okay, give me a second. Thank you so, so much. Put these away. Is this a tour? Yeah, it's a tour. Okay, do you guys... Do you mind if I I don't know, we're finding out tomorrow. Okay. Three Did you talk to Mrs. Marconi yet? Um, I actually talked to uh, the assistant to Secretary White. They just said they ran out of... Oh, um, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, though. Uh, do you mind if I take video? No, it's your call. Okay, it's, it's going to be live feed to a Facebook group. Is that okay? Is well, I can't say no, unfortunately. Uh, so if you want to do it, you're more than welcome to do it. I'm not going to stop you. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, guys, you heard it here. We're at Central. Come on into the Student Service Center. Student Service Center. Uh, it is one of the areas under to be renovated uh, through this project, the referendum project. It is uh, there is the Student Service Center. In essence, is your counselors and your social workers. Um, it, we have 13 counselors who work in here, three secretaries and a registrar. And at the end of the hall, which we're going to walk down, is our students, uh, our social workers. We have six social workers. I started working here in the fall, 1999. And uh, I think we probably still had about 13 social workers then, too. But we had two social workers um, at that time, and one, maybe one, maybe two psychologists. Now we have six social workers and three psychologists with a bunch of interns as well. The programming you need on campus is much different today than it was then in 99. Uh, we're addressing a lot more mental health issues and student social emotional learning issues on campus. So we need a lot of those programming. While this space is a nice space, there's nothing, if you look at it and structure-wise, there's not a lot wrong with it. It's just tight. Uh, and we'll walk down and check some of the rooms. Every student will come through here at least once a year. And now, if probably more than that, more likely. And they're meeting with their counselors or the social workers. The major concern is, at the end of the hall, which we'll walk down, is the social work offices um, are definitely not up to code. And, and that's for a variety of different reasons. Uh, when we expanded to, uh, from two to four to six social workers, we had to find space on our campus. So what we did was partitioned out a math office and repurposed it for offices. So, so it's, the ventilation is not the best. It's definitely some privacy issues in terms of sound and issues associated with that. And then the counseling offices are small. The, the other major issue is here's your counselors. Your social workers are in good proximity but you have your health service, your nurse at a whole other end of the building, you have your deans at another end of the building, you have your psychs at another end of the building, you have your uh, special education department at another end. So if we're running a business today, you try to put your resources together, you know, in terms of efficiency, proximity, things of that nature. So creating a new student service center would do all of that. It would put all of your student-related services in one place so those teams can collaborate to meet the needs of your students on a daily basis. Uh, on the first floor would be your counselors, your social workers, your deans, your nurse, your psychologist, and on the second floor might be your, your special education, which would include special education teachers, as well as speech pathologists, uh, physical therapists, occupational therapists, all those different things. Questions I have before we go through here. This room would be renovated to classrooms. This is the only place you're going to see classrooms. Uh, as I said, the, the space itself is a good space, so you can divide this uh, I want to say it's five classrooms, but it might be three. I don't know off the, off the top of my head know which the number is. But this could be renovated for classrooms. Uh, but there are no additional classrooms being put in. So what we're going to do is walk the hallway. And as you can see, it, it sort of narrows. So that's the other issue uh, that runs here is it's not, it's not ADA compliant. So we have multiple students in wheelchairs or walkers or things of that nature. Their ability to navigate that hallway becomes an issue. And when we get through it, you'll see it's a really small lobby where we have a secretary for the social work department to help support the students that are coming through and help support the social workers. Uh, there's no way any wheelchair walkers or anything else are going to get through there. Uh, take, feel free to poke your head in any one of the offices. There's probably nothing confidential at the moment there. Uh, but we'll walk through that. We're going to come out the other end of the other end of the door. I'll sort of lead us through. Uh, 
Clemson Orange there, Syracuse Orange, not sure. Illini Orange. Illini Orange, ah. And kindergarten. <laughs> uh, always somebody out correcting you. Huh? That's how it goes in life. Any questions on the Student Service Center? So where would the new service Absolutely. center be? Sir, we're gonna, when we end the tour, we're going to end upstairs in the library, and I'll get a better view because it's going to be in the courtyard. So if you've ever been to our courtyard, it's a beautiful venue. Uh, section of it's going to be partitioned off for the student service and you'll get a better look, a bird's eye view of it from the uh, library uh, that you've up there. Other questions? All right, we're going to head down. Our goal is to go through the pool. We're definitely going to make it to the pool. I'd like us to walk through the locker room, but our pool is such used with such volume that our chances to get to the locker room are, are iffy. It depends who's in there. Right now we're in water polo season, so it's a boys team and a girls team. This is the real conflict in regards to our pool because there's only one locker room. When the pool was built, it was prior to Title IX, and there was no girls swim team. So they only made one locker room. Uh, so we've been navigating and managing the locker room uh, during the fall. The girls use it for swimming and diving team. During the winter, the boys use it for swimming and diving team. And in the spring, for the most part, we let the girls use that locker room because it's accessible to the pool. And the boys can use a PE locker room or a small, really small, tight closet locker room. Uh, hopefully we'll get in there. Fast Walker, Alex. He's good. He's absolutely good. <laughs> it's our first home game for volleyball. But we'll take a chance to poke your head in there too. There's no work being done in the gymnasium, so most of that's been already fixed. see if we can get in the locker room. If you guys just want to congregate here, I'll be right back. What should she do? I see you the other day. I saw her. I go, you know, your problem is you work with Grace, and Grace is so smart that she doesn't want to talk to her. Yeah. 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 Go through the locker room, they're not using it. We're going to go out on the pool deck after that. Coming through! Anybody in? All good? Coming through! Okay, I'm starting to smell chlorine. changes as well as some elevation changes so be, be careful as you come through. So the um, tile is actually uneven. 
kind of uneven, weirdly uneven, to fall down. Whoa! See? It's so uneven I almost fell down. We're going to go out that door. You want to hold the door for everybody? Chlorine is really strong. We're going to go out those doors right there. Everybody out? You think we're all good? Okay. I'll take it. Uh, the pool was built in 1959, like I said. Uh, it is a an appropriate space. It meets the needs. We use it for eight periods a day in swimming class, PE classes. We use day in the morning, as early as 5:30 in the morning for swim teams and swim clubs, and it goes all night long for our local community swim clubs that use it. It's constant use. You can feel the humidity and the, and the chlorine. Uh, it's an old, old, what we call a Dectron system that manages the heat and ventilation and all the, the chlorine. It's, it's in bad shape. We repaired it last year. It's about a million dollars to replace that Dectron system. We know it is a failing system. It, whether or not a pool is built, regardless, that system is going to fail. When that system fails, this pool will be closed down because that's a million dollars to spend on a Dectron. We're not going to do that uh, until we ultimately determine whether a pool will be built. This, Six lanes, 25 yards. The new pool is exactly the same, a six lane, 25 yards, but in a different location. Uh, yeah, so uh, Hinsdale South is in the yeah. same location. So we're yeah. cutting it, digging it deeper well, and meeting the needs so you can use it. Ours, we have a huge, huge swimming community. So one of the issues of the task force was to put it in a different location. And then if that task force, or if that swimming community wants to build something bigger and greater, then they can raise those monies. But you can't do that here. You would be, the best you're going to do here is a six lane, 25 yards. Right, yeah, I don't know about the answer to that. I, I, uh, there's nothing above us except the pool. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, she would have to do that. So they're going to put the pool on the southwest corner if it gets proved and then allow that swimming community to decide what other additions to that pool should be. For example, a 10-lane, 50-meter uh, pool, for example. So down the southwest corner, if you've ever been out to our football fields, uh, the practice fields on the southwest corner, there's a retention pond. And you can see it, that's where it would be. How deep will it be? It will be the code. So I, I don't think that's final number has been determined. 14 feet is the code now, but 10 feet was the code at some point, too. So while we're grandfathered in, uh, we do know there's a liability. That's why all the diving boards are up. There's no diving allowed here unless you sign a waiver knowing the risk of diving. So the team doesn't uh, yeah, dive? It is a 10 foot deal. A 10 foot, it says 10 foot right there. Yeah. yeah. And there's a ledge. And there's a little ledge. Is it going to be any deeper when they replace yeah, they're, it? Yes. I don't know the depth that we're going to do because while 14 is, feet is the depth now, who knows what it'll be in 5 or 10 years. So it might make sense that you're going to make it 16 or 18. Or, and I don't know the answer to that. Well, why is South getting the difference is a ten million dollar difference. Because we could replace this, we can. It'll be six lane, twenty five yards. But the community has, in the in the groups that have done this, have asked, is there a chance you could relocate it, which would enable the local community to maybe do something bigger, like the like donors and stuff. The reference, the reference yeah, they just relocated it. It's, it's just. Not the call, it's, just, it's the fact that it's being relocated. So is the money the $10 million difference because it's being relocated? Yes, that's it. Well, we also have bigger issues because we only have the one locker room. So regardless of another locker room is going to have to be built, we have the, the ventilation system that must be replaced. So there are other infrastructure costs associated with it. Is the locker room Yes, all of it, yes. All, all of it, yes. And the stands as well? Yes. Oh, it's going to be a new location. So yeah. Here, if we left it here, yes, yeah. There, the cost is different because then actually we end up putting locker rooms on the other side of this wall here. 
uh, would be adding a locker What's room and a wall. It's, we're going to go out there. It's a hallway out to door five. Oh, that's the idea. Just, like, so you have better access. Right. I know. I know. It, so, is. it is. For when the dive portion yeah. starts, you have to take the lane lines out for a meet. Correct. You still have to do that. Correct. In a 25 meter, a 25 yard pool. Yeah, yeah. you're still going to have right. to They're going to want to use the locker room, so we're going to go out this way. We can ask any questions out there. Look a left when you go out. You go ahead. Look a left when you actually go outside. Vote yes, please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the whole like right in the middle. Yeah, so it's up to We needed to get out of there. Those girls were looking to get back in the locker room. Their practice was ending. Are there other questions I can answer about that, that space? You can close. We're going to go in a different door. Any other questions? All right. So this is door. What we call door five. We also call it our pool door. Uh, the main entrance, as you know, at Hinsdale Central is actually off of 55th Street, where we started. But in reality, this is the main entrance. About 70% of our population. Uh, all of our staff come through this door, and about 70% of our students come through these doors. Because there's our staff parking lot. Our auditorium is here on, on the other side, which is probably where you parked, is our student parking lot. They all come through this door. If you, uh, if you look around, it doesn't look like a main entrance, okay? So this area would be redone. Uh, it would have a grand uh, fine arts area. We'd be increasing the fine arts space, art, music, things of that nature. Most of this area would become uh, banned we build a new concert band room. Yeah. Uh, and we'll sh I'm going to take you over there in the, in the meantime. Currently, it's the entrance. It's overflow parking, as you can see here. Uh, it is the entrance to B&G. That's our, that's our loading dock right there. And it's also what I like to call it's garbage. Because uh, it's our garbage area. Uh, so what happened is, in 2012, we built a chiller building, our energy building, which is just on the south side of this auditorium. It's also spaced with three loading bins for, for loading dock, as well as housing for B&G, but it's not connected. They didn't connect it to the building in, in 2012 when they did it. So the referendum would allow a bridge to connect the two, the energy building and this building, to allow B&G to move all the product that comes in and out of school and move the, uh, the garbage out of there and repurpose this for instructional purpose. Uh, so this is our, our concert band. Are these doors secured? 8 a.m. to 7, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. You cannot get into any doors at the main entrance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a question back to the pool. Yeah. On the website, it talks about the, the referendum of 7 million people replacing sure. over there, 17 over here. But then there's also another document talking about the variances that were approved. And it says to expand the pool to a larger now, pool, six lane, 40 no, yards, it's 24 million. Yeah. Which way is it going to be? It's not. They're, they're, they're spending 17. That's what she's saying. If the community wanted to do that, they got to pick up that tab. Oh, so the variances are for other people, other groups that might have an interest in creating a larger pool. Because the pool, the referendum in November was a larger pool than the six lane twenty five. I think it was. A, I think it was that very, and that's the one got turned down. So the, the board of ed came back and made us equal pools at both campuses, and that's what it's going to be. Okay, so that's what that variance yes. was listed. Because I'm like, that's a huge Correct. difference. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we'll go in over here. Come on by. Okay. Excuse me, do you, I'm um, videotaping for a uh, Facebook group. Do you mind if I videotape your oh. questions? Oh. I don't mind. No, thanks. Okay, okay. sorry. <laughs> They're really good questions. I'm like, oh, I hope I can. It's a lot of money. I know. Money. I know you're asking very good questions and you oh, went you through everything. I did. All right. Got it. Oh, boy, thanks. Thank you, guys. Oh, a nice couple. <clears throat> it's pretty big. I think what did I? Somebody once told me it's over a million square feet. 
Yeah, you're, you're, only, you're, only, doing, you're only doing conference meets. Yard, it's 25 yards. It's a conference meet, that's it. No state, no sectionals, none of that. Yeah. So like I said, this is the B&G. There's our loading bin. And here's our vault where we keep you know, consumables, so to say. Um, there's a lot going on right here. Uh, we have a concert tonight, so I wanted to take us through the banding room, but we might have to just peek in. You can see it. It's a, again, it's a, it's a nice space, don't get me wrong, but with 300 students in marching band and band classes, it's a very confining space. So creating a space for all those music students is the, is the plan here. All right, so we'll take a look. As you can see, as we'll poke our head, and then we're actually going to go downstairs, and I'll explain that in a moment here. So this is our band room. Hey guys. You guys all right tonight? Yes. Looking forward to so poke your head in there, and then we're going to go down these stairs. But there's probably about 40, 50 people in there. Now imagine marching band is not able to use this at all. It works for classrooms. Poke your head in there, and then we're going to come right down here. Thank you. Welcome. So we got a choir and orchestra concert tonight. Tribute to Mozart. I'll be there, right? Tribute to Mozart. We're looking forward to it. You do? Is there a separate choir room? So this is the main band room, 167. The choir room is 169 down there. And then we have two smaller rooms, which we'll use for like sectional training. So what I mean by that is all of our students, whatever, no matter your instrument you play or no matter how you sing, we have what we call sectional training. So if you're in class, in concert band, a lot of times you're being pulled out, whether you're working on uh, woods or, or, or string instruments. So we'll have to, we, the sectional teachers are teaching you all over campus, any places we can find to do little sectional teaching. Do you have like soundproof rooms? There are some on the other side of this wall here. There are, I think, okay, four, but they've almost become storage of all the equipment that we have. Uh, so, but they can be used. There's only four. There's uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. I think there's five. A total of five. There might be six, but I think it's five. So, what we're going to do is go downstairs. You need to go down here. Uh, you're just listening to me. Oh, perfect. So, we're going. Uh, we're going to go downstairs. Right below the auditorium is our fitness center. So we have PE classes, uh, and obviously using every fitness center we can have on campus. But if you are a student with a disability, wheelchair, walker, or any other disability, you're still signing up for PE unless you opt out for a medical purpose. Our, most of our students with disabilities will take personal fitness, which is in the gymnasium or the... Anyone graduate from here? Uh, you might, I don't know, it depends on, without a need. It used to be our indoor track. Uh, is down below. I think it's 21 laps around to do a mile. Uh, if you think outside, it's four. If you do a regular track outside, it's four times, 21 times. If you go through our, our, our uh, field house, I think it's 11 times, nine or 11 times to do a mile. So 21 times around is a small track. Uh, so now it's like per, it's Nautilus, free weights, treadmills, elliptical machines. The path we're going to take is, as you can see, if you dis have a disability, you can't go down the stairs. And the only elevator goes, and we're going to come out, when we do the walk, we'll come out by the elevator. So there's no elevator to the lower level of the auditorium or the second floor of the auditorium. So part of the referendum in that loading dock area that, where we just came from is to build an, aud, an aud elevator that connects the second floor of the auditorium as well as the basement of the auditorium where there was a fitness center. Right? So when we do this walk, and I'm not going to say a lot because it speaks for itself. It's the infrastructure. We're going to walk through what I call the guts of B&G. Um, but what I want you to keep in mind as you walk is think of a student or someone you know with a disability and imagine them doing this walk to the gym every day and back from the gym. It's really heart-wrenching. It really is heart-wrenching. Um, but that's needless to say. We'll end up by the elevators and we'll come out over there. All right? I have a question. Yeah. Why hasn't the renovations for the disabled students sure. been done before? There are two issues. With anything on campus, with any code, you don't, until you touch the area, you don't have to do the code. You don't have to get you up to code. As soon as you start remodeling, yeah. Yeah, until you start remodeling, that's going to require you to do it. And once you start it, it's a massive work. It's a massive undertaking. So. Well, I guess my question is, is if you're going to remodel, yes, mm -hmm. it has to come up with code. Right. But if the concerns about the existing mm -hmm. students have existed for mm -hmm. so many years, how come it hasn't been remodeled before? Correct. Right. So I don't have an answer for that. I, mean, I can't answer for past decisions or whatever else or why things were were not done. It's kind of kicking the can down. No, I don't think it's kicking the can now. It's, it's we got to fix this. Well, we someone else kicked it. Yes, they did. Oh. If you want to. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, you guys gonna go downstairs? See if that door is open when you get to the bottom of the stairs. Do you want to go? Okay. Uh, oh, it was locked? Yeah, they're not going that. We're gonna go straight ahead. We're gonna go straight ahead. Go staff only. Well, today you get to be staff. Yay! Watch your step. What step? Who's gonna hold the door for everybody? Me. All right, I got some new takers here. Hold the door behind you. Yeah. Uh, inside. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it like right here. Oh, I'm sure. 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 To the fitness center and then back. Hey guys, yeah. so I'm the 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 They'll come down the stairs. They'll come down that stairs and then go back. The no, only only the handicaps. Yeah. Uh, the students come down the stairs we came, go into that other door that was just on the left of us, and then go back up that way. Or they're using other facilities. Yeah. How does a wheelchair get up and down? Uh, it's, a lot of the wheelchairs we've seen on campus are motorized so they can make it. Or they have, we have an adult go with them, almost always, to supervise or provide assistance as they Because right, it is a sharp incline and decline, right? Yeah. yeah. So there's almost always a staff member. Morgan, I do not think, has a staff member. So these are two of the three elevators on campus. These are the only ones that go to the basement. The other elevators, by our world language, there is no basement over there. It's the original building or one of the early renovations to the building has no sub basement. Uh, this goes first floor, second floor, or first floor, and second floor, as well as the basement here. She can come down these stairs, do her path, and then come back to her place. All of this area, uh, if you went here long enough, you might remember our bookstore was down here. So this was the bookstore 10A. It was gigantic. We no longer house books on campus. Students buy their books through an online bookstore. So it's a nice room. We just re renovated that this past summer or two summers ago. Outfitted it, got rid of the asbestos, cleaned it up. It's in it was intended to be a driver's ed simulator room, but we're on our way out of using simulators. Uh, we actually, all this, all the way west, will become tech ed, uh, STEM learning. One of the dreams of our technology education classes is to create a construction management class. Because right outside here is the whole driveway. They could create many plants, many houses, and things like that. And there's access with driveways and things like that. So all of this would be converted to some real cool uh, curriculum opportunities out of technology and education. Yeah. Other questions? All right, we're going to go upstairs. We're going to go into the kitchen of the, uh, uh, the, calf, the staff calf, or the staff uh, Okay, so some of the comments that um, are kind of funny. The little kids are like, this is this where they keep the kids in detention? And another kid was like, it smells so bad down here. I thought that was kind of interesting because kids don't really lie, and that's what they said when we walked out there. So we can get out. I'm locking it. 
going to want to leave here. Somebody forgot to clean, or they're still cleaning. So our cafeteria, uh, we have five lunch periods a day. Each period is 25 minutes long. Uh, it house, will house up to about 500-ish students in a heavy lunch period to as low as 300 in one of the less lunch periods. The cafeteria seating area is not really being touched much at all. It's just more aesthetic. We might change the way you seat so you're not sitting at those same old cafeteria tables you and I all sat at our entire lives. We might create more modern seating environments. Give me one minute, okay? So we create more modern seating. Most of the cafeteria work is being done in here. It's the original kitchen, it's the original wiring, it's the original, uh, original electricity, ventilation, all of that. So almost every dollar, almost every dollar out of this is being run, spent on this. You can see there's a fan in the upper left, my left hand corner, your right hand corner. That to me is the most critical fan on all of campus. Uh, it, because right underneath it, to the, to the left of it, it's pointing out, is our deep fryer. Now I would argue nobody needs french fries in their lunch, but neither here nor there, students buy french fries. So our deep fryer is there. The ventilation is so poor in here, you have to have that fan on to blow the smoke out into the hallway, otherwise we'd have a fire alarm every single day. Uh, so that's one of the issues. Is anything being done in this area? So what will be done is, the, the along with this kitchen, the serving lines will be redone. So there's a serving line here, and we have a serving line right over here. That, the big problem with this one is the line actually goes in the hallway. So your the line's up right outside the gymnasium. It's an interesting time of the day from 1045 to 115 every day. Uh, so we're, we're going to reconfigure the serving lines and the cafeteria. It's like the infrastructure, the guts of the cafeteria. The, the, the space that we're going to walk through right here, it's a beautiful space. Uh, the, the lunch, it meets our needs. It's just this is what's concerning in terms of the building. Other question? Yes, ma'am. How may I help you? But if they're still cleaning, why are they cleaning now? Why are Because you're the here. <laughs> you missed him. He was over there. He actually ducked behind while we were in here. I right? saw. So we're going to go through here, and then we're going to actually go upstairs to our library, which is our final stop. You can go out one of those doors and hook a left. We're going to go by the yeah, stairs to the left. Oh, yeah. We can go through it. Yeah. Through it to the left. Then there's stairs over on the other side. We're going to go up those stairs. Alright, you can see it, right? Yes. Are you guys joining us? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. talked about the student service center you can see that tree over there that's an essence where the student service center would end on the south side and that would connect to the building on that north side for the most part that's where the area would be we'd also create an a better pathway an enclosed pathway from here to the west wing of campus uh, for world language English social studies and science does that make sense so the courtyard will be smaller. Cut through period. It's even smaller. It was even larger before because this was all courtyard before, um, before this addition is put on. We'll head upstairs to the library.
it's a beautiful space, isn't it? I mean, what a beautiful library. Uh, it was renovated in 2000, finished in 2004. And if you graduated from here, you might remember the library actually, it actually connected to the north end of the campus. Uh, if you were on second floor, like room 203, and you needed to get over to my old classroom, 229, you used to come go down, go underneath, come back up and go over, because uh, you couldn't get through. So in 2004, what we did is offset it. So we created a, a thoroughfare, thoroughfare for passing through and made it a large, beautiful space. It is a wonderful space, which is why the renovation dollars, the referendum dollars, aren't being used to, to expand this space. It's being done to repurpose it. The way I describe this library, it's a li well, it was built in 2004. It's a library for 1990s. It's books and it's computers. A library in the 21st century, a library in 2020, is a lot more like we see at work. It's collaboration spaces, small spaces to collaborate and get your presentations ready, to work one-on-one -on -one for instruction in small team environments. So most any work in here is going to be renovating or remodeling, repurposing the area. All of our students have Chromebooks, so all of these computers are likely to disappear this summer. And we'll try, we'll, without, with or without referendum dollars, we'll start to repurpose some of it the best we can under operating dollars. The other side that would be here is, like I said, there's the Student Service Center. You can see our tree over there. It probably actually comes closer to this pole, uh, in, in one of these two poles, is connect a, a enclosed hallway. So you have your hallways on the north and south, east and west side of campus. You have five minutes to get to and from campuses. There's not really an access to the cafeteria, so you'd create a middle hallway that would sort of run, think of it outside this wall here, and just be enclosed to get you to and from the cafeteria from the center of the building. So you don't have to go all the way east or all the way west to get to it. So that's where some of those, that, I don't know what the dollar amount for the library is. 1.7. 1. 1. 1.7. Some of it's for that hallway as well. Hmm. So questions? I understand the furnace failed at least one of the... At Hinsdale South. Okay. At Hinsdale South. And they have two. It was, it's one of their originals. I believe it's one of the originals. If the second one had failed, they would have been sending students home. Okay. Mm -hmm. And was that how, how long did it take to get that repaired? Uh, I, it was like 24 hours. I think okay. they had somebody Now, out. there's a NAD. Does it work when it's... When it's working, is it warm enough? It's yeah, here on our campus. No, it's just dead south. Uh, it's, it's I've cold. never been cold over there. I, but, okay, uh, it's because my, my daughter says it's very cold. The, the advertising I saw, yeah. District 86, yes, is advertising all over the place uh -huh. about students going to the classrooms with blankets around. I think it was that one day, but I don't. I don't. I that's I, really yeah. misleading yeah. if that's the case. Yeah. I, I can't say that. Classrooms that aren't sure, like any campus. Yeah. Like if you sat in our northwest corner classes, we're, we have air conditioning here. I can guarantee you, that's where the sun is all school day because it comes rises on the east and sets all the way it just beats in it so it's it, it's so generally, it's uncomfortable generally but, speaking yeah, yeah. that's not accurate that kids are going to classroom with blankets no, i would not advertise that so okay. I'm, uh, well, yeah, they so, did. okay all right other questions was this school built yeah segment it seemed like it was it seemed like it a was hodgepodge of well, just uh, i mean I, I think every high school i've been to yeah. has been built yeah. like that in 49, uh, the original campus began at the corner of 55th and Grant Street. Yeah. So uh, there we still have the plaster walls. I could take you down there and you'd see some of the stuff there. That's why there's no basement in certain yeah. segments because there just wasn't, you didn't need it. The basements are over there when they were built. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I really appreciate you guys taking the time. We can walk back downstairs. We didn't get into the other rooms, but uh, I thank you for being with us yeah, tonight. For helping uh, you. And hopefully I can, you can make an informed choice. Uh, with everything you got going on. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll head back out. You can go. If you want to go out, either.